this kind of thing where the government is looking for information about reporters, it's usually a canary in the coal mine that something worse is coming in terms of uh, an effort to exercise control over the press. This is the second in a series of videos distilling some of the testimony from the weaponization of federal government hearings chaired by Jim Jordan. In part one, we heard Chuck Grassley's testimony. Next up, Matt Taibbi and Michael Schellenberger, recipients of the so-called Twitter files. The original promise of the internet was that it might democratize the exchange of information globally. A free internet would overwhelm all attempts to control information flow, its very existence a threat to anti-democratic forms of government everywhere. Today, American taxpayers are unwittingly financing the growth and power of a censorship industrial complex run by America's scientific and technological elite, which endangers our liberties and democracy. From the very start of the two-hour session, there seemed to be two objectives at play. Committee Republicans were focused on the findings of the so-called Twitter files, while Democrats seemed more focused on the witnesses' journalistic credibility. The Republicans have brought in two of Elon Musk's public scribes to release cherry-picked, out-of-context emails and screenshots designed to promote his chosen narrative. Currently, the Federal Trade Commission is conducting an investigation into Twitter, looking at issues including the recent layoffs there, as well as trying to get owner Elon Musk's internal communications. The FTC's first demand in that first letter after the Twitter files come out is, identify all journalists, I'm, I'm quoting, identify all journalists and other members of the media to whom Twitter worked with. I, I do find it scary. I. I I think it's none of the government's business what, uh, which journalists a private company talks to and why. Um, I think every journalist should be concerned about that and the absence of interest in that issue by um, uh, my fellow colleagues in the mainstream media is an indication of how low the business has sunk. In fact, there were some moments during the hearing where it sounded like committee Democrats were trying to get Mr. Taibbi to reveal his sources. Uh, Who was the individual Twitter? that uh, gave you permission to access the emails? Well, the attribution for my story is sources at Twitter, and that's what I'm going to refer to. When was the first time that Mr. Musk approached you about writing uh, uh, the Twitter files? Uh, uh, again, Congresswoman, that would... Uh, I just need a date, sir. But I can't give it to you, unfortunately, because... This, this is a question of sourcing, and I don't give up. I'm a journalist. A, I don't reveal my source. Sources. It's a question of chronology. No, that's a question because of sourcing. Because you earlier said that, that someone had sent you through the Internet some message about whether or not you would be interested in some information. Yes, and I refer to that person as a source. Uh, did Mr. Musk contact you, Mr. Taibbi? Again, the attribution for my story is sources at Twitter. Mr. Schellenberger, did Mr. Musk contact you? Uh, actually... No, I was brought in by my friend Barry Weiss, and so this story, there's been a lot of misinformation. So Mr. Weiss brought you in. Mr. Taibbi, Ms. Weiss, thank you. Uh, I do think it's worth pointing out that, you know, I have co-sponsored, I think some of my colleagues have co-sponsored the SHIELD Act in previous Congresses with Democrats to protect what we see them trying to do today, protect journalists from having to reveal their sources to government. Like the previous weaponization of federal government hearing, there's been very little mainstream media coverage. But perhaps that's because so many publications have been implicated. Another troubling aspect is the role of the press, which should be the people's last line of defense in such cases. But instead of investigating these groups, journalists partnered with them. If Twitter declined to remove an account right away, government agencies and NGOs would call reporters for the New York Times, Washington Post, and other outlets who in turn would call Twitter, demanding to know why action had not yet been taken. Effectively, news media became an arm of a state-sponsored thought policing system. Yes, the Twitter files would likely have received more coverage had Mr. Musk released the documents for all journalists to inspect independently. But that doesn't mean that developments should be ignored. This morning, we saw a stunning display of their attack of your character. We shouldn't be surprised. This is what the defenders of big government corruption do. This is the playbook. They destroy the messenger. We just saw it here on live television and everybody can see it for themselves. Fortunately, Mr. Taibbi and Mr. Schellenberger remained largely unfazed throughout proceedings. And I thought they got their point across quite well. We learned 
Twitter, Facebook, Google, and other companies developed a formal system for taking in moderation requests from every corner of government, from the FBI, the DHS, the HHS, DOD, the Global Engagement Center at State, even the CIA. Importantly, the bar for bringing in military-grade government monitoring and speech countering techniques has moved from, quote, countering terrorism to, quote, countering extremism to countering simple misinformation, otherwise known as being wrong on the internet. For every government agency scanning Twitter, there were perhaps 20 quasi-private entities doing the same thing, including Stanford's Election Integrity Partnership, NewsGuard, the Global Disinformation Index, and many others, many taxpayer funded. The government no longer needs a predicate of calling you a terrorist or an extremist to deploy government resources to counter your political activity. The only predicate it needs is simply the assertion that the opinion you expressed on social media is wrong. Democrats are denouncing the House GOP investigation into the weaponization of federal government, but that's largely because Republicans appear to be getting somewhere. And it doesn't end with the Twitter files. We haven't talked about Facebook, but we, we now know that we have the, we have the White House demanding that Facebook take down factual information and Facebook doing that.